gosh. Oh, there we go. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to TRF. Today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about topwater fishing, but mostly we're going to talk about the hook set. What I see people doing wrong with hook sets, of course, what I did wrong about hook sets for years, and what you can do right with your hook set to catch more fish like this. Let's talk about it. So no matter what stage you are at in your fishing journey, everybody's got to set the hook. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, you have to understand what it feels like to feel that bite, pull back and set the hook on that bass and get it in the boat to make some awesome memories. And so that's what this video is going to be all about. It's going to be about kind of my journey with the hook set, how my hook set, at least what I'm proud of, uh, has progressed over the years. Uh, and of course, explain to you guys how you guys can have a better hook set that can put more fish in your boat. My name is Tyler. If you guys are new here, I love teaching you guys what I have learned throughout my fishing experiences to help you guys become better bass anglers. And really, this is not just a better bass angler. This is a better angler in general tip and so this is going to be a very technical video you're going to see a lot of b-roll shots a lot of you know shots from my videos over the past few years and then of course stay tuned to the end i catch an awful big bass here uh, and here's a little sneak peek of that so make sure you guys stay tuned for that catch here at the end of the video but uh i say we hop into you know what is a hook set I feel like asking that question uh, might insult some people, but for the, the very beginner out there, uh, a hook set is where you feel the bite and you have to take your hand and you have to literally pull the rod from in front of you to behind you, or I guess not really in front of you, behind you, but in a, in a motion towards you to tighten up the line and set the hook point into the fish's mouth. Get it past the barb, that way that fish is not coming off. You know, we're gonna talk about a bunch of different hook sets today. I'm gonna to kind of go over like the, the, the chart that I've made when it comes to how hard you have to set the hook for different lures. Uh, but if you are not actively setting the hook, you're not gonna be getting a very good hook set into those fish's mouth. You're not gonna get a good hookup ratio and you're gonna lose a lot of fish. So no matter what lure you're throwing, you have to have the motion of the rod in front of you to the rod more close to you and kind of up in the air, just kind of like the swooping rod motion that is called the hook set. And that is what helps you land those bass. And really bass, walleye, muskie, whatever, you're gonna need a hook set. I feel like that was kind of a, a dummy question, but I feel like I had to cover that just to get our bases right. A hook set is that sweeping motion of the rod from forward to backward to get the hook into the fish's mouth. So the first thing I want to discuss is the relationship between your line size, your, your pound test line, and your hook set strength. And, and kind of the quick tip that I want to give is that you cannot set the hook too hard with light line. You know, when I was first beginning as a bass angler, I would definitely go to set the hook like I had been fishing uh, a frog or a Texas rig, and I would switch to 10 pound line on a finesse jig or a jerk bait, and I would use the same strength of hook set, the same energy on that, and I would break off quite often, and I was confused. I thought, is my line bad? Did I tie a bad knot? Was there a fray in it? But that line is just not meant to handle a heavy hook set like other pound lines are. So make sure you guys, uh, before you even pick your lures, make sure that you're a adjusting in your mind, okay, I'm throwing 10 pound line, throwing 12 pound line, and as you step up in line size, you can afford to use a heavier hook set. And I'm in favor of absolutely smoking on them. I love doing a heavy, heavy hook set, but you have to remember you can't always do that, especially when you drop down to, you know, 12 and 10 pound line on a bait caster, and especially anything less than, than a 10 pound line on a spinning rod, you really have to be careful with how heavy you set the hook. So over here in this corner, we're gonna have a hook set strength chart, or maybe less of a chart, maybe more of just a list. And so on the top is going to be your heaviest hook sets, the bottom is going to be your lightest hook sets. I'm just gonna leave it up here for one second after I list it off. So screenshot it if you need to, reference this every time you go on the water. If you have someone new getting into bass fishing, teach them this chart, that way they may uh, not make as many mistakes as I did. But starting with uh, the heaviest hook set needed is gonna be a frog. Especially if you're fishing a topwater frog, on a heavy rod and reel combo with uh, with a very, very heavy braided line. Lure category number two with a little bit less strong of a hook set is going to be your punching flipping. You know, flipping in heavy cover under docks, you're gonna need a heavy hook set, uh, you know, a very, very powerful hook set to get fish out of whatever cover they are sitting in. And so that is going to be hook set power number two. Now dropping down a little bit is going to be a jig. 
I found with a jig, you know, the, the hook uh, diameter is usually a little bit thicker than your average Texas rig hook. And so a jig is going to require a little bit less strong than punching or flipping, but just more than a Texas rig, which is the next one. Texas rig, I feel like is your, your great all around hook set. It is strong, it, is, it has some force to it, but you're not absolutely wailing on those fish. You're, you know, doing that too much, especially on lighter lines, as I mentioned, can definitely cause some, uh, some strain to your line and can break it. Now, right below Texas rig, we have top water with treble hooks. I don't include this with the frog because the frog has two very heavy wire hooks uh, that you have to usually get fish out of bushes or out of grass with. That is why the heavy hook set is recommended. Top water with trebles, I still like to set the hook hard, but it's just below in, uh, in you know, intensity for me beneath the Texas rig. Uh, now beneath top water with trebles, we're gonna have a spinner bait or a chatter bait, or so your, your bladed baits. I have found that because those are moving baits, you don't really need to set the hook super hard like you would with a Texas rig. Uh, you, all you need to do is just kind of like reel into them, and it is more of a hook set than the next lure category we're gonna talk about, but it definitely is not completely giving them your all. I'd say those, those lures are meant to have the, the, the fish eat it, you know, chomp down on it, you set the hook and it kind of like forces its way in. But of course those, those hooks diameter in terms of a chatterbait and a spinnerbait are going to be a little bit thicker than the next category, which is a crankbait. Crankbaits, you don't really need to set the hook. You're kind of reeling the crankbait, giving it a pause, reeling it, and all of a sudden the fish eats it and the fish kind of takes the, takes the slack away from you. And so you just kind of lean into those fish. It's less of a hook set and more of a hook lean. Uh, just below crankbait is going to be a jerkbait. Jerkbait usually has the thinnest wire hooks out of all the hardbait categories. And so when you are jerking on your rod, and most of the times the fish will eat it on the paws. So when you do the next jerk with the jerkbait, the fish will be basically be on there. And that's kind of the hook set. There's no need to, to, to you know, jerk it on there and then set it again, because oftentimes you'll pull those very light wire hooks out of the fish's mouth. Uh, beneath the jerkbait, we're going to drop down to the spinning rod. And the next thing is going to be a Ned rig. You know, a Ned rig definitely doesn't need a heavy hook set, but it does need a heavier hook set than a drop shot. Drop shot, you basically, you don't need to set the hook at all. It's basically just, you feel the bite, you kind of reel and pull up. There's hardly any hook set that needs to happen there. And the final one beneath anything is going to be a hair jig. Hair jig, you're casting it out there. I mean, I'm talking about the tiny little ones for small mouth. Um, Casting a hair jig out there, you're reeling it slowly, you feel the bite, and you just kind of lean up. And that is the hook set progression from throwing a frog all the way down to throwing a hair jig. Uh, make sure you guys are adjusting your hook sets based on this chart right here. So now that I've gone over my hook set strength chart from heaviest to lightest hook sets, I'm gonna show you guys a clip of me catching a fish on each one of these lures to show you all exactly how you're supposed to do it. Now, of course, you're gonna have variations in your hook sets where let's say your, your body's turned and you're more surprised and maybe the fish takes more slack, so you have to do a, a heavier hook set. But in, in most cases, this chart fits uh, very, very well. So here is a frog catch. A cold tag, gosh, gosh. Get him. Get him. No. Get him. There we go. Gosh. Get him. Yes! Holy cow! The next type of hook set is going to be the pitching and flipping, so here's a catch of that. There's one. Yes. Get in here. Get in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I see it. I see it. it's a big one. You may have not been able to tell the difference between the uh, the frog hook set and the flipping or punching hook set. They're not really a whole lot different. I just had to rank them somewhere, and so they're both really, really heavy hook sets. Next hook set is going to be a jig. There's one. No oh, biggin, biggin. Yes, sir. Woo! Got him. Biggin. Yes, boys. As you can see, the jig hook set is really not all that much far below the, uh, the, the, the punching or the flipping, but it definitely is above a Texas rig. So here is a Texas rig hook set. Oh gosh. <laughs> Little guy. That's a scoreable bass. 
all of those first four, of course, you're gonna have times where on a Texas rig, you set the hook as hard as you did on a frog, and sometimes a frogfish will surprise you, and you just won't be in the position to really give it your all, and so you're gonna give it more of a Texas rig type hook set. So you kind of have some leeway with those four. I just had to rank those in order, and usually when I'm throwing a jig or a Texas rig, it's on fluorocarbon, and so I'm not gonna throw, I'm not gonna set the hook as hard as I would with braided line, which is what the frog and the punching and flipping setups are. So those first two kind of are interchangeable, the second two kind of interchangeable. I just put the jig above the Texas rig because it is a heavier wire hook. Next on the line was a top water with treble hook, so here's a catch of that. Got him. There we go. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You gotta get them when they're schooling. Yes, sir. My first possum kingdom largemouth. As you can see from that catch, I didn't really give it a whole lot of strength, but it definitely was more strength than the spinnerbait or chatterbait. And I have plenty of fish catches of that. In fact, here's one from today's video. There we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's power pull down. So hopefully you guys could see there, I didn't really give it a hook set. It was more of a, you know, reeling and a reel set, kind of lean into it, but it is harder than a crankbait hook set. So here is a crankbait hook set. There's one. What are you, my friend? This is my kayak net. Oh baby, oh baby, no, I just, I just botched it, yes! So hopefully y'all could tell the difference between the spinnerbait, chatterbait, and the crankbait. Uh, of course, the crankbait has treble hooks, spinnerbait, chatterbait has more of a heavy wire hook, and so they are basically the same motion, but the crankbait is going to be a little bit light. And you may say, Tyler, why can't I set the hook hard on a crankbait? Well, because those treble hooks are very, very easy to rip out of a fish's mouth. They're also easy to go in, but they're easy to come out. And so you have to be able to set the hook lightly, and but also keep that fish pinned. That's an important part of the hook set, is that the hook set's the first half. You have to get the hook into the fish's mouth and then make sure you don't allow any slack, especially on a crankbait, because those hooks are very, very easy for that fish to throw out of their mouth. So that is the crankbait. Now, just below that, kind of interchangeable with the crankbait, but uh, I, I tend to find myself setting the hook a little bit softer is the jerkbait. Oh my gosh. Ah oh gosh, what do I got here? All right. We know the fish are here and they are eating a jerk bait. And just like that, all the bait caster ones are done. We're gonna move on to the spinning rod and the next, you know, softest hook set is the Ned Rig. As you can see, I give it a little bit of, a, of an oomph if that's a, a term I can use uh, on the hook set, but it is way, way more than I would give a drop shot. So that right there was a drop shot hook set. I'm not sure which clips I'm gonna use for all these, but I hope that you guys could see that it's really not a hook set. It's really more of just a reel set is what they call it. Cause the, the hook is oftentimes exposed you're using a little circle hook. And so you're just kind of like feeling the pressure on that fish, reeling fast and, and kind of like leaning up into it. And the last one is a hair jig. That fish is definitely worth four. That fish is so much bigger than we thought. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Now, depending on the rod you use for a hair jig, you can actually go kind of onto the drop shot or Ned Rig side of, of the power when it comes to a hair jig hook set, but you don't have to. It is a tiny wire hook, especially if you're using the Outcast Tackle hair jig that I use. You really don't have to set the hook at all. The fish oftentimes sets the hook for you uh, just by pulling back against your line. One more thing that I'm gonna show you guys real quick. I'll kind of tilt the camera up here. Hopefully, you guys can see me standing up here on the front deck. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna rearrange the camera. So one last thing I wanna discuss is kind of the hook set motion and how to have the best possible hookup ratio. So I have a jig on this rod right here. I'm just gonna flip it out there. And let's say my jig's all the way at the bottom and I have a bite. The most important thing about a hook set is that you wanna start your hook set with your rod completely tight to your line. So you guys probably can't see this, but I have a lot of loose line out right now. And so if I were to feel the bite, and set the hook, let's say with this much loose line out, I'm gonna set, and it's gonna get all the way up here before my line actually gets tight. 
And so if I'm working a jig, Texas rig, I'm basically anything besides those moving baits, Ned rig, drop shot, you want to make sure that you are giving the fish your maximum power possible. And so if I feel about on a jig up here on the top, I'm going to reel down as far as I can. Maybe not like all the way down here like over the punch rig, but I'm going to reel down as far as I can while still feeling that fish on there and then give it at, like, like literally the rod is tight down here and you want to set the hook all the way up like this kind of up and across your body maybe just like up in the air like this and that will allow you to have the most power possible because i've been stuck in many situations where i'll be kind of swimming a jig and the fish eats it causes slack and i have to set the hook up here because i was not ready for that bite so i mean you can get a hook in a fish if your rod tip is up and most of the time you want to drop your rod tip take up the slime with your reel the slime the the slack with your reel and then set the hook as hard as you can from down here to up here. Keep up the tension, reel it, and get that fish in the boat. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. I know there's a ton of fish catches, ton of action. If you did, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see y'all next time on TRF. Gosh, there's one, right? Yeah. I think it's one. Oh yeah, it is. It's a big one. It's a big one. Holy moly. There he is. Gosh, that bite was so subtle. Gee, that one's big. Hoo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh. As you guys saw there, my hook set was more just like a lean into it, kind of kind of like a whip into it. I didn't actually like set the hook. Gosh, very strong fish. There we go. There we go. There we go, and there we go. <laughs> That's a chunker. That guy's been feeding up. Got the thunder cricket in the side of the mouth. <sighs> and he was not coming off, that's for sure. That's one heck of a beautiful fish. We're gonna stick that fish in the live well. Comment below what you think it weighs. I think it weighs five. I think it's like five even on the connect scale. We'll see though. I like it. Well, I spent most of the uh, morning trying to get one more big bite, but uh, couldn't make it happen. And I've got some more, some more videos I have to film. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh that fish that I caught earlier. It, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's bigger than five, but it's, it's a fat, chunky, chunky dunker. So we're gonna stick the camera back here, grab the Connect scale. I've got the uh, Connect scale version three that I'm gonna be using today. Uh, if you guys wanna get your own Connect scale, it's an awesome scale. Digital scale, of course, very, very accurate. Connects to your phone via Bluetooth and you can use it to cull fish, all that jazz. I'll have it linked below with a discount code, of course, cause I wanna help you guys out. Let's get this fish, see what she weighs. I can tell y'all one thing, this fish is gorgeous. Like looking at, like the colors on this thing are just absolutely beautiful. Ow, nope, nope, ow. Stop it, you idiot. Uh, there we go, 4.96, I guessed it. Almost five pounds, right underneath. But just a healthy, beautiful Texas bass. I love catching five pounders, that's fun. And with this beautiful fish in my hands, I'm gonna say adieu to you guys here on the channel. I hope that you guys learned something, and if you did, of course, hit that subscribe button to join Team TRF. TRF, my channel is growing like crazy right now, and it's so cool to be able to teach you guys how to catch fish like this. So uh, we'll see y'all next time on TRF.